also like to um, acknowledge my coworker, Ms. Barbara Austin. Thank you so much for supporting me this evening. And we have our interpreter, our sign language interpreter, Ms. Deborah Duke joining us. And I'm gonna go ahead and spotlight her. She will be um, signing throughout the presentation. All right, so it's important for us to assess where we are and how we're feeling, and it fits right in line with social emotional learning. So at this time, I would like to pose the question, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? You can, in one word, just type for me in the chat box, or you can use an emoji and express how are you feeling today. So I'll give you about 30 seconds to type or to pick your emoji that expresses how you are feeling today. Ms. Austin, are you seeing any responses that we can share at this time? Yes, ma'am, sure do. Um, I have one parent that is feeling a little tired tonight. <laughs> and um, so we certainly, I think, can relate to that, but we're glad that you're here with us this evening. And I have placed grateful um, in the chat box as well. Would love to hear from other parents who have just joined us. Thank you, Miss Latasha. She's glad to be here. Okay, that's all we have for now. Thank you so much, Ms. Austin. Thank you, families, parents, for sharing how you're feeling today. Again, it's very important for us to assess how we are feeling. So please, if you get an opportunity, if you are just joining us, please, um, in one word, describe how you're feeling today, or you can use an emoji to describe your feelings as well. As I stated earlier, we are so very fortunate to have Dr. Flowers with us this evening, and we will talk more with him after our presentation. The first part of our presentation is pre-recorded, um, so um, I just have a quick announcement. If you have just joined us, we have placed a link in the chat box. Please be sure to click on that link to sign in so that we can record, um, have evidence of you being here this evening. Without further ado, we're gonna go ahead with our presentation. Welcome to Social Emotional Learning Part Two. In today's presentation, Dr. Charles Flowers will define social emotional learning discuss the importance of parents adding to their toolbox of strategies, and he will model how parents can promote and encourage emotionally intelligent behavior in their children. In Bibb County Schools, we believe in our vision that each student will demonstrate strength of character 
and will be college or career ready. We also believe in our mission to engage the community in educating each student for a 21st century global society. Our values are the different ways we demonstrate our commitment to our vision and mission, and we honor you in this work. Partnering with students, parents, and the community is a key part of achieving victory in our schools. The work we do collectively leads us to every student achieving and being ready to move to the next level in their lives. To document your attendance today, scan the QR code or click the link found in the chat box to sign in using your phone, tablet, or computer. You will select Social Emotional Learning Part 2 for the course and enter your child's lunch number. If you have more than one child, you will only need to enter the lunch number for one of your children. Thank you for signing in. This helps us keep a record of all parents and family members who attend our trainings. In order for everyone to get the most out of this virtual experience, we want to share a few housekeeping tips. All attendees have been muted by default to minimize all distractions and background noises. To turn your video on or off, click anywhere on your computer screen or device to bring up the Zoom toolbar. Select the start video icon to turn your camera on and the stop video to turn your camera off. You may have some burning questions to ask. At the end of the presentation, we will answer a few questions as time permits. We have a saying in Bibb County Schools, mission first, people always 2.0. Partnering with students, parents, and the community is a vital part of achieving victory in our schools. So let's get started. Our presenter is Dr. Charles Flowers. He is a retired educator with 35 years of teaching and administrative experience. He is the founder of Second Chance Works, a program for restorative justice. This program emphasizes the importance of good behavior, strong character, and its impact on academic performance. Dr. Flowers' restorative practices curriculum is being utilized and implemented in some of Bibb County School District's middle and high schools. At this time, I would like to welcome and introduce our presenter, Dr. Charles Flowers. Hello, welcome to Victory in Schools Parent University Strategies for the Virtual Classroom. We plan to give you an exciting session today, so we need you to strap on, hold on, buckle up, and let's get ready for part two of our dynamic series, Victory in School Parent University Strategies for the Virtual Classroom. Victory in progress is our motto. It is our aura. It is what we stand for. It is who we are because we want to have victory in schools, and the parent university is a part of our mission victory and progress. The program is a function of the Bibb County School District under the leadership of Dr. Curtis Jones, who is our superintendent. Our goal in this session, parents, is not to criticize what you're doing, but what we want to do, we want to add to your toolbox. We want to help you with what you already know, encourage you along the way, because there is no professional in this parenting business. There is no such thing as a professional parent. Social emotional learning is a very important component of everything we do, especially in the virtual classroom and giving you strategies to help your child. I was telling some teachers just the other day that every teacher right now is a first year teacher. 
Think about it. Every teacher right now is a first year teacher. And in, for the parents concerned, we're first year parents because we have been forced into some things that we were not accustomed to. The purpose of this training is to provide you as a parent with some knowledge and strategies for social emotional learning and to encourage your child to become what? Intelligently behavior. We want them to be intelligent in their behavior. One of the most important components of the Parent Academy is to engage the parents. Notice we said engaged. We didn't say anything about involvement. Engagement goes deeper. Engagement means that we are in there with you. Engagement means that I am with you. We're working through this thing together. So we want to reintegrate you as a parent. We want to give you strategies that we can do things proactively rather than responsibly. By right, by law, social emotional learning should be proactive. 80% proactive and then 20% responding to what? What has already taken place. Some of the goals that we have, we want to improve the school culture and climate by utilizing restorative practices and social emotional learning. We want to hold our children accountable without giving them the death penalty for making a mistake. How do we do that? We do that by promoting parental engagement. We want to reintegrate you. We feel like one of the missing components in our society today is parental engagement. You are your child's first teacher. You are your child's best teacher. It is our job to help you and give you strategies what? So you can actually help your child. We want to strengthen instructional leaders. We want to give teachers the tools that they need. We want to give the parents the tools that they need. We want to all enhance learning because the number one goal of education is what? Is to provide learning opportunities to increase our child's academic endeavor. How do we do that? We want to help at-risk kids. We want to help kids who are at risk and what? COVID-19 and the virtual classroom and these virtual strategies has put all of us in a sense of what? Trauma. So that means we are educationally poor because we've lost all of this instruction time. So our community is engaged with poverty and trauma and our children are also, not only just from the physical perspective, but from the educational component. Take a look at the graphic and it talks about poverty. One in five kids in the United States live in poverty. Three million more kids than it was a little over 10 years ago. And another alarming factor, one in three of these are either Hispanic or black. Our objectives are quite simple. We want to define what is social emotional learning. We want to tell you why social emotional learning is so important. We want to tell the parents and help the parents to promote social and emotional development and strategies for the virtual classroom. This is our roadmap. This is what we plan to do in this section. Once again, tell you exactly what social emotional learning is, why it's important, how you as a parent can what? Help promote your child's emotional development and give you some strategies for the virtual classroom. What is social emotional learning? It is the process through which children and adults understand and manage their emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy from others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and help them make responsible decisions. Let's break that down a little bit. Help them to manage their emotions. Help them to set and achieve positive goals. Show empathy, not sympathy now, empathy and establish and maintain positive relationships and help them to make responsible decisions. We have to do this every day as adults. So if we have to do it every day as adults, it is our responsibility, parents, to make sure what? We teach this to our children. It is a process based on five major competencies, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, problem solving and relationship skills. Parent, parents, I want you to take a look at this for a second. Parents, which one of these would you consider to be your strength and which one of these do you consider to be your weakness? 
I'm going to give you mine first. My weakness is self-awareness. Sometimes I'm not aware of where I am in terms of understanding what other people are feeling. I get so caught up into what I'm doing that sometimes I forget that other people have feelings too and that awareness around them. But I feel like my strength is relationship skills. I feel that I have the ability to bring people together. I have the ability to communicate with people. I have the ability to not let people make me who they are. So building relationships is more important than any of these, in my opinion. You have yours, so that's what? What's yours? What's your strengths and what's your weakness? Notice the key words here. Self-awareness. I know what I can and cannot do. Parents, we all have limitations. We're not good at everything we do. Self-management, I know how to control myself and my emotions. Parents, how many times have you come to the school and you your behavior was less than becoming? If you did that on your job, you would probably be terminated. Social awareness, other people have feelings and rights as well. But when you did this, were you thinking about how it affected someone else? How about problem solving? I can fix an issue without causing a bigger issue. Sometimes we have to understand that we can't fix it at that particular time. Relationship skills. I can get along with other people. I can. We want I to be understood because it brings about a sense of accountability. Why do we need social emotional learning? Because intervention is always important. The goal of social emotional learning is to re-educate them. It's to re-educate me, to re-educate you, and to re-educate our students by making everyone be aware of ourselves, our surroundings, our community, and the world at large. We cannot ignore what's going on in our country today, in our city, in our state. We cannot. We have to re-educate everyone about what's going on. Take a look at what I call the magic wheel and how COVID-19 has impacted your life. Has it affected you spiritually, creatively? Has it affected your finances? Has it affected education? Has it affected relationship, your social life? I want each and every one of you to take a few minutes to look at that magic wheel and think of one way that COVID-19 has affected your life in a negative way. Then I want you to think of one way that COVID-19 has affected your life in a positive way. Why is social emotional learning important? I'm so glad you asked. Because it helps us to increase our knowledge. By definition, knowledge is defined as a collection of facts. Skills, it helps us to what? Identify what our strengths are as well as our weaknesses. That word attitude, it helps us to what? Understand that we do have an attitude. It can be positive or it can be negative. Social emotional learning is important because it helps us to what? Control and manage our behavior. And then it allows us to make what? Successful choices. Parents, look at it from this standpoint. Our children, every day, their lives is like a fork in the road. They can either go to the right or they can either go to the left. It is our job to navigate them and put them on a path that's going to lead them to success and not failure. Look at the beautiful little girl. If you had to think of one word to describe her, what it, would it be? Would it be innocent? Would it be joy? Would it be beautiful? Would it be natural? Would it be unique? What are your hopes and dreams for your child? Take your child and put them in that same picture. Better still, take a younger version of you and put you in that position. Why our children need social emotional learning? Because it helps them to establish rewarding relationship with others. We absolutely have to teach our children the importance of getting along and building positive relationship with others. Help them to maintain meaningful relationships. Not to start it, but what? To maintain it. It helps our children to handle difficult social situations that they will continue to face. It helps our children to manage times of high stress and it keeps them from launching into destructive action when they get angry. That is why our children need the social emotional learning skills that we are discussing. 
Take a look at the impact of social emotional learning. It helps improve classroom behavior. It gives them better attitudes about themselves, others, and school. It helps them to manage stress and depression. All of these things come about. Our students have been out of school. A lot of them have been out of school, out of the physical building over a year. Do we have any idea how much stress and depression that they've caused because they've not been connected? But for the parent, classroom behavior is contained from within the student's own ability to manage stress, tantrum, depression, and negative attitude. Parents, if our children are experienced this at home, if they can't handle stress at home, and if they're having depression and tantrums and negative attitudes, and if we have not made an attempt to address that, then guess what? They're going to bring these same strategies, these same behaviors to the classroom. And when that happens, they have affected learning not only for themselves, but for other students, and that cannot take place. But how does it work? It works because it's student-centered. Each individual student has to do the work to make themselves accountable and aware of themselves and others. Accountability is the key. The impact of social emotional learning. Social emotional learning can have a positive impact for up to 18 years old. If your child is 10 years old now, what they learn right now at 10 years old, they're 28 years old, they're still gonna remember the positive effect of social emotional learning. But on the other hand, the program needs to grow parent. You cannot use the same strat strategies for your third grader as you do for your eighth grader or for your senior. Social emotional learning has to grow with the child and remember that social emotional learning like most other programs and most other strategies is a work in progress. But think about the investment. The average investment for social emotional learning on evidence-based programs is 11 to one. For every $1 that we spend, we get $11 what return. But parents, take a look at this. The federal government and other grant organizations, they spend so much money on behavior intervention, school violence and bullying prevention. But if we had a well-managed social emotional learning program with you involved, this will save money on funding. So now we can take that funding to work on our students in terms of their academic future, their CTA programs, as well as getting them prepared for post-secondary opportunities. The impact of social emotional learning on economic mobility. I think we need to understand that we have to teach our children very early the importance of money, the importance of education, and the importance of finance. We need to teach them that you don't spend money that you don't have. We need to let them know that social emotional learning can help reduce poverty. But the programs must be calibrated. That means they must be adjusted for every student that's participating. Social emotional learning involves equity, not equality. Social emotional learning is designed to give the students what we need and what they need and not giving everyone the same thing. Social emotional learning has another powerful impact. And I don't want you to take this negatively. When it says it decreases the likelihood of receiving public assistance and living in public housing. We're not saying or spending time in a detention facility. We're not saying that it's going to take place. We're not saying anything is wrong with that. But we don't want our students to be satisfied with living in these environments when they don't have to. We want to tell our children, I'm living here now because I don't have a choice, but you have a choice. We have to help our children to think above where they are. We have to tell our children that their life is a canvas. It's a portrait that's never been painted, and they are the architect. We have to let them know that I will help you do better. But parents, there's an implication for you. The sooner we start teaching our children social emotional learning, the deeper the impact will be. We have to teach them when they're young, that word malleable means we're able to mold it and stretch it and bend it to where we need it to be. The sooner we start with social emotional learning with our children, 
the sooner they will understand the importance of it in terms of their behavior, in terms of their what academic future, in terms of them growing up to be successful. Communication is the key. Parents, we absolutely have to talk to our teachers and we have to talk to our children. It takes a village to raise a child, yes it does. And we're all a part of that village. How about teacher to student and student to teacher? Students learn best when there is a positive relationship established. We're gonna go even further than that. Students learn best from teachers they like. They do. Student to parent and parent to student. A healthy parent-student relationship helps to enhance learning. Therefore, communication is the most important element in this process. What do you see in that beautiful little girl? What do you see? How the students see themselves and their peers is often an indication of how they see the world. How students see the world is a reflection of how they see themselves. I see a future doctor. I see a future lawyer, a future teacher, a future politician, a future queen. I see possibly a future president. What do you see? As it relates to social emotional learning, behavior is the smallest part of a person. Punishment alone does not change behavior. When we discipline our children, we need to discipline with dignity. Get this, please. Discipline is not what I do to my child. It's what I do for them. Because if I don't teach my child social emotional learning, then I'm not going to be able to help them reach their goal. So in terms of the virtual setting, that discipline is so important because they're at home, you're at work. A lot of times schoolwork is not taking place. So these strategies simply means that I have to teach you discipline. I have to give you strategies where we're sitting down together and we're going to learn social emotional learning if we don't learn math. We're going to learn relationship skills. We're going to learn self-management. We're going to learn social awareness. We're going to learn how to build relationships. And we are going to be the architect of our own future. But parents, it takes a mindset. And I like to refer it to this. We cannot have a million dollar, a million dollar mindset and have a minimum wage work ethic. We can't have a million dollar mindset and have a minimum wage work ethic, which means that social emotional learning takes work. We have to work with our students. You have to understand that you are your child's first teacher and in this virtual setting, it is so, so very, so very important that we remain connected and make sure that we hold our students accountable. Our intention with this Works Incorporated is to help you work, is to help the teachers work, help the administration work. And if we're all working together, we get away from you and me and come to what? Us. It is our job. Yes, it does take a village to raise the child, but you as the parent are the single most important element in your child's life and their education. Thank you so much for joining us in this session and we look forward to more. And now we look forward to some phenomenal questions that we know that you have. Thank you. All right. Parents, at this time, we are getting ready to transition into our live Q&A session. But before we do, I just want to make a couple of quick announcements. If you are just joined us recently, we want to ask that you click the chat box and click the link there to complete our sign-in sheet. We definitely want to um, have a record of your attendance today. So please take a moment to click on the link and complete the sign-in sheet. Um, I do also want to share an event that we have coming up next week on Wednesday, May the 5th. We will be having our summer academic 
resource fair. And this is an opportunity for our families to learn information and receive information about summer camps this summer. If you're looking to enroll your child in a summer camp, we will have exhibitors on site to meet with you. This is, um, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. So in an effort to keep everyone safe, it is a drive-by event. And the event will be held at Central Georgia Technical College on um, Macon Tech Drive. Um, and it's going to be in front of Building K. So again, the event is next Wednesday, May 5th on the campus of Central Georgia Technical College. It will start at 1030 and it will end at two o'clock. So please come out. Um, if you would like to support our team, if you were interested in volunteering, um, please indicate your um, information in the chat box and I will be sure to reach out to you. Um, my name is Angie Franks and in just a moment, there will be a slide that will come up after our Q&A with my contact information. Um, again, those are all of my announcements. Ms. Austin, you can take it away with our Q&A session. Thank you so much, Mrs. Franks. I apologize for that uh, delay. Um, thank you so much again, Dr. Flowers, for sharing um, what social emotional learning is, why it's important, and why it's important for our parents to promote social and emotional development and strategies for our virtual programs. Um, it is at this time that we would ask parents if you have any additional questions, you're welcome to unmute yourselves or to place those in the chat box. Um, and we will post those to Dr. Flowers, who is on live with us this evening to answer any questions. Questions. But I do have a couple of questions to um, catapult our conversation this evening um, from, from some of our parents, if I may. So the first question, Dr. Flowers, is um, essentially how can parents inspire their children to have a better school year? How can the parents inspire their children to have a better school year going into next year or to complete this year? Both of those, please. Either one, in terms of completing this year, the, the work ethic and understanding, sitting down with your child and letting them know that it has been a very difficult time. They've been disconnected. They hadn't been in school. It is very difficult, but their education is the single most important thing that they can do. So how can I inspire them? I can let them know that education is a priority and not an option. And how, would I, how do I do that? I do that by spending quality time with them in the afternoon when I get off work or at some point to let them ask them, how did your day go? And let them know the importance of their school work. And also letting them know that there is a strong possibility that they will be back in school full time next year. And we need to, to do some things this summer. We need to work together this summer. We need to start getting our mindset right going into next year. But more importantly, let them know that I will be there with you through this process. Thank you, Dr. Flowers. So to continue or to kind of build on that, um, another question was, what advice would you give parents on how to connect with their children in a virtual learning setting? I think you've touched on that some, but any specific yes. behaviors or strategies um, in addition to what's been shared? I think, yes, the first thing is observing your child. Parents know their children better than anyone. Observing their behavior, do you see any changes? Do you see any mood swings? Do you see any signs of depression? Do you see dramatic changes? So if we see these changes and we recognize them, we need to sit our children down and we need to talk to them then. Now that goes back to that building relationship part. And if they don't want to talk to us, then find another family member that they may connect with better than us. And don't take it personal if they don't, but in terms of that, I mean, we have to know, notice their behavior and observe them and ask these questions. And if they don't feel like answering them, ask them to write them down. But we absolutely must be able to communicate with them. And these are things that cannot wait. These things need to be handled immediately. 
Great. Thank you, Dr. Flower. So communication certainly is key um, in the methods that we choose to be able to do that. It just needs to happen. Um, that's what's most important for our children. Um, are there any parents that would like to unmute and share your thoughts or ask any questions? I do have one more question to share, but we certainly want to allow you all an opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Flowers this evening. What? Um, yes, ma'am. I'm Lonnie Bronner. I have a freshman over at Westside. Um, my biggest thing is, I guess, redirecting. Because um, some days he's engaged, you know, and school is important this week, you know, and then the next week is more like a pull. And I mean, I work full time. I work five days a week, so I can't be here like that. But when I am off, I do, you know, I'll ask the questions. Do you need any help? Anything I can assist you with? You know, and the teachers, they are awesome. I do have a rapport with most of his teachers. Um, you know, they pretty much, if I have a question or a concern, they'll get back with me. But how can I get him redirected back to, okay, I know this is what I need to do. I need to stay focused on this. I know we've had these issues, but I just need to get my, to me, he's just not focused as well as he was before all of this became about. Okay, and um, that's a great question, phenomenal question. We're doing some work. We just started with Westside, and I'm so glad that you said that because Mr. Horton and his staff, they do a phenomenal job. They do a phenomenal job in trying to make sure that everyone is connected. But as from a parent myself, even though my students, my kids are out of school and teachers and in other fields, I still work with a lot of schools, but the problem is our students don't see this as being real school. They don't see it as being real school. They don't see it as being as important. They have lost that connection with their friends with a lot of different things that are going on. So how do I get them reconnected? I think one of the best things that we can do is sit them down and ask them about their future. What do you want to do after you graduate from high school? And once you talk to them about that, let them know that this freshman year is the single most important year in their high school career. Because if they get behind and that grade point average drops, then especially if they have a C, now they got to make an A to get that to a B. So if they get too far behind in the ninth grade, it's going to affect them. Now, are they mature as we want them to be? Absolutely not. Are they going to be focused? Absolutely not. So it has gone, it has to be what we call a wellness check, a daily wellness check. Well, I'm going to check in with you. Well, how was school today? Or what did we accomplish today? Well, you know, how can I help you? What can we do to get you back on track? I appreciate you. I love you. I'm here for you. But we have to get reconnected and refocused. Ask them, what can you do as a parent? And I think if we start doing that, ma'am, I think and on a daily basis, one or two things are going to happen. They're going to make up their mind <laughs> that they're going to, well, mama going to ask me this, so I better start getting myself together. Or they're going to what? Completely phase out, but we don't think that they will. I've never seen it happen that way. But if you stay constant and stay the course with them, they understand that mama is concerned about you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bronner. The floor and if is- I may, And if I may, and if I may, uh, if you don't mind giving me your son, giving the name to, to Ms. Austin, and I'll be back in Macon again on Wednesday, and she'll send me a reminder, and if he's, is he at home, or he's in the, in the building? He's in the building, but they don't have class on Wednesdays. There, Wednesdays is, I don't know um, what you yeah, call it. Yeah, that's the asynchronous day. Yes. Well, he has a phone number, right? Yes. Uh, you have now, I don't know, but my background is coaching. Okay. I coach, I, coach, I was a head football and head baseball coach for over 30 years and in Columbus, Georgia. And that's my background. So I'm used to communicating with parents. I'm used to communicating with players. I'm used to finding out what's going on with them. So I would be more than happy to reach out to him if you get that information 
to Miss Austin or either Miss Franks, and I'll reach out to him. Okay, thank you. I will do that. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you, Ms. Bronner. And um, I just sent you a direct message um, that has my contact information and Mrs. Frank's contact information as well. I hope that will be helpful to you. Thank you, Dr. Flowers. Sure. Right, any other questions, comments, anything that you all would like to share? Parents, this is your time. Dr. Flowers is certainly available and he is, as you can tell, a wealth um, of, of information to help each of us um, on this journey to helping our children. Who's going to be my next courageous parent? Did you send this, Miss Bronner? Did you send that via email or? No, ma'am. In your chat box, there's a as as the kids would say, there's a DM in your chat box. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll check that for me in our Zoom meet. Cameron, help me with this thing. <laughs> we'll be glad to email it to you, though, Miss Bronner. That won't be a problem at all. I just wanted to get it to you immediately. Uh, cause I'm I'm tripping right now, cause I don't see what you're talking. We're right about. here with you, Miss Bronner. We're all in this together. It's no yeah, problem. absolutely. We're yeah. all in it together. Yeah. So you can take your time and, and look at that. Uh, we'll be glad to email it to you. He uh, okay. He I got it. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I got it. That engagement is, we talked about. He with you. Is he with you there now? Yes, he's listening. He's listening. Well, yes, sir. Well, he's going to hear from me. He's shaking his head like yes. He's doing his homework. But he's shaking his head. So he's that's what I'm talking. There we go. Okay. What's one our more, next question? One more question, um, Dr. Flowers. Thank you. So uh, this is a scenario in a family's home where there are siblings in the home and the parent is experiencing um, maybe some sibling rivalry and how, you know, they've tried to, you know, sit the kids down or what have you to build that relationship. What advice do you have if, if there is um, sibling rivalry um, within the family? Well, first of all, did, did this exist prior to the pandemic? That's unclear. Okay, if it is two factors. If it occurred prior to the pandemic, you're going to handle it one way. But if it ha if it happened during the pandemic, it's another approach. Now, let's say that it was going on all the time. Anyway, the rivalries. We can we can turn that negative into a positive by making it a meaningful competitive rivalry in terms of grades, in terms of homework, in terms of responsibilities in terms of caring about each other. If they, you know, they're brothers, they're part of the same DNA. So we need to make those exercises challenging to them and make it rewarding at the same time. Yeah, it's okay to be competitive. I come from a family of 10 and all of us was competitive in everything that we did, but it was for attention. And I have three, four granddaughters and two grand, three grandsons. And they compete all the time. They compete all the time. So if I'm going to give them something, I give them all the same thing, but I still give them a different color. You would think that you give them all the same color. No, that's going to create more. But I think you create positive incentives and make that rewarding for them. Now, if the pandemic has caused this rivalry to be that way, then a lot of that is simply because they have lost connection with their friends. They have, they may be uh, experiencing trauma. They are not in a place where they can socialize. With young kids and with teenagers, elementary kids, I mean, everything is about competition. If you notice in elementary school, everybody wants to be at the front of the line. Everybody wants to be at the front of the line. So Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it many years ago, it's the drum major effect. Everybody wants to be out front. Everybody wants that attention. So with that attention, there comes some responsibility with that. So there's several different ways we can handle that. But let's turn that negative to, into a positive. Now, let's don't get into this theory now where two negatives equal a positive. Yes, the only thing that happens is in mathematics. But in real life, 
two negatives, you're going to get two negatives. Dr. Flowers, thank you so much for taking the questions and comments that we've had during our Q&A session. Mrs. Franks, at this time, I turn the um, session back over to you. Ms. Austin, thank you so much. Dr. Flowers, thank you so much for um, sharing your knowledge, your expertise. Ms. Austin, thank you for leading that discussion. Um, parents, at this time, as we move forward with concluding our presentation, I just want to thank you for joining us this evening. You have no idea what your presence has means to us and so we thank you and we honor you for taking time to join us on our final session of this school year, Social Emotional Learning Part Two. Um, at this time, if you have, um, if you wish to contact our team in any way, please give us a call at 478- 779-2579. I have listed the names and our email addresses if you wish to contact us directly. Again, if you want to help and support on next Wednesday, please reach out to me, Tangi Franks. My email address is listed on the screen. We would love to have you volunteer and work with us um, and it is a book giveaway. We will be giving out books for, for elementary, middle, and high school students that they can read during the summer. So it is going to be a great opportunity. There will also be some other organizations that will be available to speak with you and provide resources. So next Wednesday is our event, our summer academic fair on the campus of Central Georgia Technical College from 10 o'clock to 10.30 to 2 p.m. To conclude our training today, be sure to scan the QR code that's showing on the screen or you can click the link found in the chat box to complete the evaluation form. As I stated earlier, this is our final Victory in Schools Parent University for this school year. And so we would love for you to take a moment to evaluate how we did today. Um, and for you to share on question number 10, there's an opportunity for you to enter what types of workshops you would like to see for next school year. So please be sure to on question number 10 that you select other, and then you're going to enter the workshop or um, what, if, what information you would like for us to share with families, you would make sure that you include that in that box. Also for question number 11, time. That's very important to us. We want to honor um, your, what, your feedback. And so time is one of those things that, you know, it's a hit and miss, but we want to, if 11 o'clock and six o'clock, which are typically the times that we hold our sessions, is not a good time. We want you to tell us that. Let us know that so that we can make those changes for next school year. Again, we want to thank you for attending our social emotional learning part two. This concludes our final Victory in Schools Parent University sessions for the 2020-2021 school year. Parents, we appreciate your support this year and hope that you will take a moment to provide your feedback. If you would like to view any of our previously recorded presentations um, for, from this school year, you will go to www.bcsdk12.net. You will click the image that is pictured on your screen um, under resources for virtual and in-person learning. You will select parent training workshops and the session you would like to view. Again, I would like to thank Dr. Charles Flowers for sharing his knowledge, his expertise, for giving us tools that we can put in our toolbox. I want to thank you from the bottom of our heart our hearts, our family engagement team, I certainly want to thank you ladies for supporting me in this work. 
And at this time, if you have any questions, um, you can unmute yourselves and ask them. If not, have a wonderful rest of the evening. Mrs. Franks? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry to disturb you at the end here. We had a, a parent that wanted the event information repeated. Okay. Um, our summer academic and resource fair will be held next Wednesday, that's May the 5th, on the campus of Central Georgia Technical College. And I believe the physical address is 3300 Macon Tech Drive. Mrs. Richardson, please um, uh, correct me if that information is not correct, but it's next Wednesday, May the 5th from 1030 to 2 p.m. Thank you. You're very welcome. Dr. Flowers, uh, do you have any final comments or any? Yes, I would like to make one final comment for the parents who did attend. I don't think we can ever understand the total impact that you have on your child as a parent. Uh, please don't ever think because you are not a you're not a teacher or you're not an administrator. Please don't ever think that your voice don't count. Your children listen to you even when you think they don't. And my children as adults right now tell me things that I told them when they were in elementary school. So your impact as a parent is so, 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 so important. And please don't ever give up on your child. Regardless of that situation, do not give up on your child. And like I said, you are your child's first teacher. You are the single most important person in their lives. Let's continue to make our children and their education a priority and not an option. Thank you all so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I, I do see that our coordinator, Makiba Davis Rogers, is on the line, and I certainly want to give you an opportunity to share any final comments if you would like to. Uh, good evening, everyone, and certainly I appreciate the opportunity to um, say thank you to everyone. Uh, Dr. Flowers, you're greatly appreciated for all that you have offered our families this year. Uh, it was timely uh, in this pandemic. It was timely as parents to receive this information. And I was just thinking to myself as a parent of seven children, um, uh, my, uh, I was thinking about what you said about that wellness check and the parent that was talking about her experiences that she's been having. And I say, stay the course, stay the course of time because it will pay out at the end. I had a daughter in high school. I had the same experience with her when she was a freshman. And then I sat down with her and I said, hey, let's take a look at your grades. Let talk to me about what you're seeing. Let me share with you what I'm seeing. And we took that as an opportunity. And even now that she is a sophomore in college, she has taken the initiative to ensure that her grades mean something to her and that she's on top of things. And so stay the course of time. It will pay off. I appreciate everybody that is here and have a wonderful evening. Oh, and by the way, on behalf of Dr. Forday and Dr. Rogers, our leads for fa uh, family engagement, have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, Ms. Makiba Davis Rogers. Um, there was a quick uh, comment about the link. How about this? I am going to share my screen for just a moment. And I'm going to show you how you can get to the Bibb County School District. 
parent workshops. So on Monday, uh, this session will be uploaded. I'm having some technical difficulties, so I apologize. Let me try this again. Let's see if we can try this again. Ms. Austin, I'm having problems sharing my screen. Are you able to go to the Bibb County School District website and I can walk them through how to access our previously recorded Victory in Schools Parent University sessions? Yes, ma'am, give me just a second, please. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I wish I had a little elevator music to play for you all, so I'm sorry. So give us a second, please. Well, you can sing. <laughs> About the flowers. <laughs> I'll be right back. I think it's only fair that Miss Tandy sing while we have intermission. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Dr. Flowers. If you'll sing with me. <laughs> uh, play to your strengths. <laughs> Actually, while we're waiting for Ms. Barbara, what I'm going to do is go out and find that link and place it in the chat box so that you will have it. Okay, Ms. Austin, if you could click that image where it says click here for important resources um, in the banner. So if you would click your back arrow. Okay, you're gonna click where it says click here for important resources for in-person and virtual learning. You'll scroll down and there is a link that says parent training workshops. You will click that link and that links to our page and every Victory in Schools Parent University um, session that we've done since the beginning of the school year is housed. And you will click the link where it says click here and it will take you directly to our YouTube channel where you can view that session. So I hope that Many of you will take advantage if you join this session late or you want to go back and look at social emotional part one, uh, that is also available for you to view. So that is um, what we have provided to you because we certainly want the learning to continue and whatever we can do to support you in that, please let us know and reach out to us. Well, the time is now 7.02. Again, we thank everyone for joining us. I hope that you've had an opportunity to complete our sign-in sheets, and I hope that you gave us your feedback on our evaluation form. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. You're welcome.